Hey, what is up, Fisherhawks? And today I'm here right under the Montauk Lighthouse, and it is May 25th. And today is a beautiful late spring, early summer day to be out here on the water. It's getting towards the end of the incoming tide, which is one of my favorite times, or I could say is the best time to fish up front under the lighthouse, is on an incoming tide towards the end or in the beginning. And I'm gonna start off throwing a small little one ounce bucktail rigged with a Uncle Josh four inch pork rind. And uh, let's see what happens. The water looks really nice and clean and clear. Got a few big waves rolling in, but nothing too bad. The water's still, you know, a little chilly today. It's uh, only around 58, 60 degrees, but uh, there has been a few stripers around and as well as a few bluefish. Oh, there was a bite right there. First cast, and I just had a bite. You gotta love it when you take your first cast and you get a bite. So there's some fish here. There's some fish here. It could have been a bluefish that, you know, just trying to bite the, uh, the tail end of it. But it could have been a small striper as well. Oh, there he is. Fish on. Second cast, fish on. Just like that. Oh, he came off. <laughs> Man. Fish on and then fish off right away. There he is, fish on. Oh, he got off again. They must be real small fish. They must be hitting the tail end of the pork rind. That's the third fish that I've missed so far. Fishing for like five minutes. Today's actually the first day being right under the light here for 2016 trying to catch some striper. There he is, got him. As soon as that jig hit the water, that fish ate it. Big bluefish, you know, or maybe like a five, five to seven pounder. I'm gonna have to go down and get them. That's a pretty big blue right there. Look at that fat butterball blue. Now I know why I missed my first few fish. They're bluefish. I thought they might have been a few bass in there, but they're chunky little blues. Look how fat that blue is. Wow. That's a chubbo. There he is. Oh! I think this is another blue. Woo! Oh, this fish is going crazy. Oh boy. Big blue, big blue. It's not that big, but you know, five to seven pounds is a decent size one right there. Oh. Okay. Whenever you're fishing under Montauk Lighthouse, you got to make sure you're using a heavy 
fluorocarbon leader, at least, you know, at least four to five feet long. I'm only using 30 pound test blue label Seaguar fluorocarbon today. I actually probably should be using around 40 to 60, especially because there's these big chopper blues around. But uh, at least today's a calmer day, so I can get down pretty close to the water and kind of just lift the fish up. If I was fishing all the way on the top there, you know, and I, and I had some real big swells coming in here, 60 to 40 pound would be the, uh, the best line to have. So you can lift those fish all the way up. Woo! Big waves coming in. But I connected my braid to my, my fluorocarbon with, uh, you know, a small little uni knot. I've got about a four foot section of 30 pound test blue label Seaguar fluorocarbon leader material. And uh, like I said before, one of the main reasons why you want a nice long leader is so that when you flip up that fish, you can grab the leader and you don't have to grab the braid. This braid here, if you grab that and you have bare hands and you have a you know, five to 10 pound bluefish you know, wiggling around on your line or on your lure, he could tear up your hand easily with this braid. So that's another reason why I like to wear a glove so I can grab the braid or the, the fluorocarbon, but I always like to try and grab the fluorocarbon and then it doesn't hurt my hand as, at all. But um, let me tie on uh, my jig again and get back out there. I had to re-tie after catching that second bluefish. I got all chewed up. So uh, I figured why not put on a new leader and a longer leader because I was only using around a you know three foot or two two and a half foot section of 30 pound test Seaguar fluorocarbon blue label leader material. So I decided to uh, give myself a couple extra feet. Now I have about a four to five foot section of blue label Seaguar fluorocarbon leader which I tied to my 40 pound test Green Moss Power Pro braid with a uni knot. And uh, one of the reasons why I like using a longer leader fishing underneath Montauk Lighthouse, whoo, that was a big wave. I like using a longer leader under the Montauk Lighthouse is basically so when you flip up that fish, you can grab that leader and then you can hold on to the leader and grab the fish at the same time. You don't want to be grabbing the braid because if you grab the braid, that braid can cut up your hands and you can, uh, you know, injure yourself. Let's cast it back out there, see if I can catch another one. Oh, there he was. There he is, fish on. In a second. <laughs> as soon as that lure hits the water, he's on it. It seems like there's a thick school of blues here, but hey, I'm having fun. This is the first day I'm hitting the surf under the light for 2016. So whether it's a bluefish or a bass, at least I'm bending the rod. This one's a little bit on the bigger side, probably around a seven, eight pounder. You lift them up, you grab the fluorocarbon, you let him shake around there, then you grab the bluefish, you unhook them, you unhook them if they want to be unhooked, <laughs> toss them right back in the water, and he's good to go. I'm going to try letting it sink before I start working it, see if I can get below the bluefish and maybe get a striper. I'm going to try working a little bit slower too. That'll help me get it down there a little bit deeper. And that's where those bass usually are. They're below the bluefish sometimes. There he is. I don't think this has stripes. <laughs> nice little cocktail, I think. Not too, not too big. What's pretty interesting is bluefish are a worldwide fish. They're all over the world. And guys actually even catch them in Australia and they call bluefish tailors. They're called tailors in Australia. And I believe Africa as well. 
They are so fat today. Fish on. I wasn't even moving it. I was trying to let it sink to get it down a little bit deeper. And a fish hit it while I was sinking. Big wave, big wave. It's a pretty good one right here. Got to swing them up. Ugh. Grab the fluorocarbon, and you're good to go. No, oh, buddy, come here. They are so fat today, these blues. Fish on. There are so many blues right here. So many blues. I don't even think I have a chance of catching a bass this morning. Uh oh, big wave. The blues are loving the bucktails today. I usually don't like using bucktails for blues because they tear them up, but when they like them, sometimes you gotta throw them. Uh oh, took my pork rind off. You're not taking that. Uncle Josh doesn't make them anymore. All right, Fishaholics, well, like I said, I'm gonna call it for the uh, morning. And uh, I think this mid-morning bite today was a pretty good day or a pretty good outing. You know, I only got out for like a couple hours and uh, man, I hammered the bluefish. I threw a variety of lures today to try not to throw a bucktail because uh, I didn't want to keep sacrificing my bucktails and my leader. But uh, for whatever reason, the bluefish just wanted the bucktail today. And, uh, you know, also I was throwing the bucktail because I had that one glimmer of hope that maybe there was, uh, you know, a small bass swimming around. And, uh, you know, bass love bucktails. So I was thinking if there's a bass around and he's going to hit anything, he's probably going to hit a bucktail. So that was one of the uh, reasons why I kept throwing the bucktail. And uh, I was just throwing a one to one and a half ounce white bucktail rigged with a four inch Uncle Josh pork rind. They don't make Uncle Josh pork rinds anymore, sadly. Um, I'm pretty much set for life. I have like 100 bottles of Uncle Josh pork rind. Me and my father bought a huge supply of it. But, um, you know, there's a bunch of other baits that you guys probably could use to tip your bucktail, such as grubs, or I believe there's another bait called like otter, otter baits. So you can check those out. But, um, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed watching this video. Today was my first time of the 2016 season fishing up front under the Montauk Lighthouse, and um, yeah, I th you know, I caught a bunch of fish, had a good time, and my arms, my arms are still getting adjusted to catching these uh, strong blues, because if you've caught a lot of blues in one day, <laughs> you know, uh, you know, it's a good workout on your arms, but um, yeah, I hope you guys are ready for more Montauk videos, because they're on their way, and they're coming, so uh, don't forget to subscribe, like, and share, and uh, never forget, live to fish, fish to live, I'll see you guys out on the water.